Justin Trudeau doesn't belong at the climate marches, climate strikes, climate protests, whatever you call them. He doesn't belong there because Justin Trudeau is an enemy to the cause of the millions of young people in Canada and around the world who are protesting for climate justice. He's not an ally in that cause. He's not even a neutral onlooker. He is a barrier. He is an enemy to the fight that these young people are waging, this noble and good fight. Look at these protesters that I played in on the opening clip. They're saying no pipeline, no pipeline, no pipeline, or what about the pipeline? What about the pipeline? What about the pipeline? And all Justin Trudeau can do is smile with that smarmy, disingenuous smile and wave at them. When he knows damn well he doesn't belong there and his liberal party doesn't belong there because they build pipelines. They fail to meet Stephen Harper's climate goals. They meet with oil lobbyists hundreds of times during the course of this government. This is the Trudeau liberals. That's them. It's not the government that says they're climate champions and they show up to the climate protests and they talk about the inspiring youth. It's the government that keeps on with the traditional conservative pro-pipeline, pro-fossil fuel agenda that will doom our species and that will harm future generations in Canada and especially in many of the most developing and struggling nations all over this planet. Justin Trudeau doesn't give one single damn about the young people at that march. He wants their votes. He wants their parents' votes. He wants the image that those young people bring, but he doesn't give one single damn about them or their cause. This is not a one-off. The Liberal Party for months now, has been trying to ride the coattails of the young people climate protesting. They've been talking about how inspiring they are and all of these sorts of things. But if you look at their policies, it doesn't work. And look at Catherine McKenna, the environment minister. The Climate Strike Canada Twitter page reminded her that, yeah, you talk about how you support the climate strike, but you're not actually doing anything to support us. And she blocked them. She blocked them for that. Unacceptable. Because it's, it's, it's so clear that the government wants young people and their smiling faces when it suits them. But when those young people rightfully turn to them and say, you're part of the problem, you know, liberal party, you're part of the problem, Justin Trudeau, you're part of the problem, Catherine McKenna, then they disengage. And then they call in their police guards, or then they call in the block button, or then they call in the, you know, what about Andrew Scheer? And they just deflect, 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 deflect because they don't want to take responsibility for their failures. This is a government that thinks that building a pipeline is okay as long as you go to the climate march. And it's just not. It's just not in any meaningful way. Look, this relates to my previous video on Greta Thunberg. That video did very well and its message was clear. Greta Thunberg isn't just calling out the far right haters. Donald Trump, you know, Maxime Bernier, all of the alt-right media people who hate her so vehemently and openly. She was talking to the neoliberals in the room, saying that their infatuation with growth and their infatuation with money at all costs is dooming this planet and it's dooming future generations and it's dooming the most precarious people on this planet. And she said that those people say they listen to her on the one hand and then do nothing about it when it's time to, you know, put their money where their mouth is and actually prove that they've been listening to Greta and people like Greta. It's as simple as that, right? Like, I mean, Greta is saying people like you, Justin Trudeau, people like you, Catherine McKenna, you are the problem or you're at least a big part of it. And yet they still show up to the climate marches. Either the liberal movement in Canada is so delusional that they actually don't think they're the enemy of climate justice for young people, or they do not care and feel they can continue to get residual progressive credit by showing up in the same spaces as these young people, 
even though what those young people are protesting are the things that that government did. And, and let's be 100% clear. This government will fight legitimate climate justice if necessary. Again, they want these young people, they want that energy, they want to be associated with the hopefulness that these young people bring. But if those young people started blockading pipeline construction, or if those young people started really, you know, challenging the political and economic and social status quo through more direct protest means as protesters often had, they would be arrested. The government would use force against these children. I guarantee you they would. And they would have no qualms with doing it because when push comes to shove, you know, the state will assert its authority for the for profit over human rights and over economic justice and over the climate future. At least when the state is run by liberal and conservative governments. And let's also be clear that this liberal government sees alternatives. You know, I'm not a fan of the Green Party, but the Green Party's got a better plan than the Liberals. And the Liberals choose not to adopt from it. And the best plan of all is the NDP's plan, which will take care not only of the environment, but of working people, of Indigenous people, of all Canadians to build a better future. It's not we have to decarbonize and all suffer because of it. We can build a better society for the many by taxing the rich and decarbonizing. We can build a just and green social order. We can do that together. And the liberals reject that. They say it's bad for the economy. They say it's too radical. It's too reckless. And that's the thing, because the liberals don't want to actually have to do anything. They don't want to decarbonize. They don't want to build an economic system based on justice and equality and opportunity for everybody, because that would mean less power and, and, and economic wealth for them. And so they'd rather keep the pipelines and they'd rather challenge moves towards social and economic justice. I will remind you, I've noted this in some recent videos, that when Catherine McKenna was asked about specifics regarding the liberal climate plan that's been offered this election, and she was asked about all this, and what she said was, I don't have any details. We gotta figure it out after the election. We gotta get through the election first, and then we'll figure it out. That's a government that supposedly supports climate justice? That's a government that supposedly supports the urgency that these young people are conveying. There's no way they actually support these young people in their cause. And I'm glad to see that at least some young people at this event called Justin Trudeau out. He doesn't belong there and his government doesn't belong in power. They're trying to greenwash an ecocidal approach to politics. Jugmeet Singh called out Justin Trudeau today and he did it fantastically. Justin Trudeau's like, we're going to plant a whole bunch of trees and it's this green initiative. And Jugmeet Singh said all that needed to be said. All the trees in the world won't cover up the pipeline you bought. And these young people realize that. And I think progressive Canadians realize that. And I think that, you know, however much Justin Trudeau wants to be associated with positive, youthful, progressive energy, he doesn't deserve to be associated with it at all.